Welcome to Film at 50, a podcast that celebrates semi-centennials in the world of cinema. I'm your host, Brian Rowe. Very thrilled to welcome Andrew Campbell back to the podcast today to talk about the sort of sequel to Tales from the Crypt. We're talking The Vault of Horror today uh, in this month of terror on Film at 50. How are we doing, Andrew? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be back talking about... <laughs> Uh, yeah, the sort of sequel to uh, Tales of the Crypt, which I love Tales of the Crypt, and uh, I, I I think we had a really fun discussing that one, and uh, so I, I was very much looking forward to this one, because I kind of knew what to expect, I, I like the, it's also kind of fun, because I like ranking them, and like, which ones I like the best. Um, like the, like the different like, segments of the movie, like what's yeah, like the number segments, one, what's yeah. number five? <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, I, I, it's fun, it's also, you know, you're getting like, almost like, tons of yeah i i love short stories and um like the it reminds me of those like uh was it like the three sentence horror stories or whatever they were called <laughs> right. that were like all over reddit and all that stuff in tumblr in like 2013 people were obsessed with like writing like yeah th uh three sentence horror stories and i don't <laughs> know it always it's like ah this is where that's what my head goes yeah to. Uh, so it's always fun yeah, I like the horror anthology films of this time period because we don't really yeah. get them nowadays. Like no, the last right. good one was maybe 10 to 15 years ago. Like it, it's been a while. It's it's not a good business practice now. Like if you're going to make a horror anthology now, it's better to do it like on a streaming service where you have like episode one, two, three. Yeah. Other than making like a 90 minute or two hour movie, it, do, it doesn't yeah. really make sense. Like no one's going to see that in a the theater now. And sure. if you're going to put it on Netflix or something, it makes more sense to just make it like a limited series where each episode is a different story. Yeah. But uh, back in the early 70s, they were pumping these out, man. Like, I mean, I want to say at least two a year. I feel like we've talked about three or four of them. Uh, the House That Drip Blood is still my favorite from 71, which I don't know if you've seen that one. That's one where just every so. story is a banger. Like every single one is Oh, awesome. really? Okay. You're not like, oh, okay. Story two is great. One and three and four are boring. Five is pretty good. It's like every single one is great. Like you don't okay. see that much. So the house that dripped blood, it's house not in blood. my, okay. uh, it's not going to be in my double feature segment at the end because that movie came out before the vault of horror. Well, and um, I tried watching the Del Toro's cabinet of curiosities on that. Oh list, yeah. That's yeah, on my, my list. Yeah. I haven't seen it yeah, yet. Is it good? So is it like an anthology it. series? What is it? It is, yes. Yeah, so each okay. episode is going to be a different story. It's, it's a, okay. a different director, different writer for each one, um, which I love the idea of it. The first, I, I think it's like the first one, I wasn't totally in love with it. Um, mm. Now, I do love the actor who's in the first one. Um, he was, he's in um, the TV show Watchmen, but also he's in um, A Brother of Arthel. Um, okay. The, the, the goofy guy, the, the little guy. I don't forget the actor's name, but um, George Clooney. <laughs> I oh god, I wish man George Clooney. George Clooney. If he showed up and that, in, that a Del Tur in a Del Toro like anthology horror show, we'd all be like, "What?" <laughs> um, yeah, I, it, Tim Blake Nelson. Um, I, I mean, I could I could sit here trying to get. <laughs> oh, brother, where art thou? We were gonna look it up. And Watchmen it is, uh, and Tim Blake. Uh, Tim Blake Nelson. Tim Blake. Ha, got it. Yeah, so he's in the first episode. Um, he plays a guy who uh. He bids on um like storage units and like people who have died, they have like a storage unit and they can like bid on like they don't know what's in it. Mm -hmm. Um they just kind of like I think they do like a glimpse and they close it and then people bid on like you know a bind the entire lot. And so okay. he bids on this one. There's like this weird um like book uh like demon thing, I forget what it was. And then he's trying to get appraised because he needs to make money off of it. And basically they like wake up a demon in a way. Um, oh. And it is, it is quite, it, it was, it was good. Um, it's a, it was a little slow. The acting was also a little odd, but um, it, I haven't finished. I'm only seen the first episode so far. Um, and so I kind of want to see, I kind of want to see like what are the best ones so I can kind of get mm. those seen first because I wasn't super into it. So if I but if I watch other ones that are really good, then it might make me want to finish them because it it, it almost like I guess like a Black Mirror ish, I guess. Right. right. Yeah, I guess the yeah. the closest thing we have to this now that's really great is Black Mirror. Like those. Yeah. Not all of them are fantastic, but most of them I've been really happy with. 
and I want to say two or three have been like masterpieces. Like some of them yeah. are so great. I'm like, make this a feature film, <laughs> like release oh, yeah. this in theaters. Uh, I tried to if watch we, Creep uh... Show too. Creep Show on Shutter. They've done three seasons of that. There's something a little bit low budget about it. There's something off. Okay. So I haven't loved that as much as Black Mirror. But yeah, back in 73, we're getting some of these horror anthology. Like the horror genre is still a little iffy. <laughs> Andrew, when I'm watching this, I'm like, there's nothing really scary in this movie at all. So I'm like, were people walking out of this really satisfied? <laughs> like, you know, there's not and like I think what's really horror films are not scary watch... right now. The, the, and they're, yes, they are not. And what's funny is that, like, because we've watched um, Last House on the Left. Uh, for yeah, some, that's right? a rare exception. Um, that's a scary film. I know. And it's so funny, like, watching, you know, I'm like, this, like, Last, the Last House on the Left came out a year before, but it's, like, way more, I guess, modern. Mo like, what you would mm -hmm. see today, more modern. And then, like, watching, you know, this 73 one, I'm just like, it feels like this came out way before. And then yeah. it, it's funny just how, like, yeah, and you know, of course, you know, West Kirby got all that crap for it, and you know, they, uh, they, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was shunned. But um, it is, it, it's really interesting, um, just like seeing, like, <laughs> that's considered horror, like, right, a year later, even though it's not scary at all. It's, it's, yeah. it's bizarre. Speaking of Wes Craven, uh, we're recording this at the end of March. Uh, we have not talked about Scream Six yet together. What do you think? No. Okay. So, um. <laughs> I I really enjoyed it. I've seen it twice already, and now I'm I'll, I'll likely see it again because I have some friends who probably want to see it. Um, and I'm like, I got the movie pass. Like, I'll always go to see it. And I'm yes, see I just got that pass again. <laughs> uh, it's great. I, AMC A list. I love it. Um, mm. And uh, thanks, Nicole Kidman. Um, <laughs> but the I really loved it. The ending i was not a fan of i did not like the last like 20 minutes i guess yeah i got a minutes. sense from your review like i got a sense that you were like a little tempered about it you weren't raving about it i wasn't yes i i, I absolutely loved everything before the ending i thought like it was heart pounding like really scary it was a scary mm -hmm. movie I was like this is so intense brutal. um it's so brutal <laughs> i mean the whole i mean so it's like, sorry i mean we can discuss, like the opening scene is very 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 different um yeah. i really loved it and some more yep. weaving it, it, it keeps great. you on your toes you're like what is happening here <laughs> yes it is i'm just like are they pulling like a weird like screen four to where they're like doing a oh movie it's like a movie, movie, within a movie. yep i thought that but too. no i mm -hmm. yeah and i was just like oh like no they're the, a killer is killing other ghost spaces like that like, this is kind of cool um and then i love the core four um mm -hmm. freaking uh mason gooding I love him. I know he's a Nepo baby, whatever people complain about these days. Which he's I just so learned. Wonderful. <laughs> I didn't know that. I uh, yeah, he was Cuba Gooding yeah, Jr.'s Cuba, kid. Yeah. I, didn't know. I Yeah. I, I, he always looks look familiar. And then, then I, found, I saw Gooding and I was just like, oh, I wonder. And then I heard about it. I was like, yeah, that he looks, they look very similar. He is so great. He's a wonderful actor and he's so unbelievably charming. I know how. Um, you can say it, Andrew. He's also what? He's also insanely hot. He's oh my also God. insanely hot. I mean, he's insanely hot. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, Jenna Ortega, what a hard job you have today kissing that. Oh guy. my god, kissing that, that beautiful <laughs> man who is just so funny. Yeah. Like I and uh, it's cause he was in Booksmart. I saw I first saw him in Booksmart. Oh, okay. and I loved him and I loved him and I, I think this maybe like his one of his first roles. I guess he's in. Isn't um, he in uh, Love Simon? Isn't he like the friend in that? Oh, uh, Love Victor, the TV show. Love Victor. Okay. Yes, yeah, he, he's a little victor, and he he kind of plays the same character as in Scream Five and Six. He like he is like the jockey guy, but he's very like he's a good guy at like in the in the base in the heart of it. Um, and you really do like him, and he he I, I know in Scream Five the directors were saying how like he was supposed to die, so they you know they pretendedly killed him off before he came back in the end. But they said like they really they didn't want to kill him off because they loved the actor so much like they just enjoyed working with him and he was so fun and this brought a great energy that like they wanted to keep him alive for a potential another movie that was so um, ridiculous so let's we got to go into some spo oh spoilers here oh yes please let's get he, into that Mason Gooding was was being stabbed repeatedly like. 50 times give me a break yeah. and he's so <laughs> yes that was. 
it's getting too, this is how people describe it. It's getting too fast and furious. I'm like, yes, it kind of is getting too fast and furious <laughs> to where people are getting the hell stabbed out of them. And like, they're still walking around like that's impossible. It does. It, it's, it's getting, it's getting too crazy now. Um, I, I did. I did feel like after this one, I'm like, I don't really know what else we can do here. Like it's getting a little go? bit. When we got to the scene of like explaining what a sequel to a requel was, and it goes on for a couple, I'm like, okay, this is like maybe taking things a little too far. But yeah, uh, I had a very great reaction to the movie because I walked into Scream Five with very high expectations, and they weren't quite met. I walked out kind of disappointed. And then I walked into Scream 6 with very low expectations. I just was like, Nev Campbell's not here. I don't know what this is, but we'll we'll go with it. And I just, I really did have a great time. I agree the last 20 minutes, it gets, I mean, it's almost bordering on parody. It's almost like, okay, what? Like, it's a little, like the reveal of the killers, but I was just happy to finally have a killer again who wasn't an, a, just a kid. I was happy to have like one of them be an adult, an adult. And, like, have yes. like a real good uh, motivation for why he's doing what he's doing, how it yes. tied back to the last movie. It just, it got a little bit ridiculous in the last 20 minutes. But up until then, like this was like a fantastic screen movie. Yes. Like I, the, great the stuff scene, all throughout. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's the apartment scene was incredible. Like that's probably one of the best screen like scenes I think I've ever seen. Like it's, I mean, I was literally on the edge of my seat. It's like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Like, uh, I mean, like when she's hanging ladder. off the on, on the ladder, that part yeah. on the ladder, like that whole thing. And also, he was just so like, I love that every pretty much every attack scene happens like when they're in a group or like, at least with two people. Right. And I was like, he like this Ghostface did not care. Like he went after them no matter what, and I love that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he just attacked uh, Sam and Tara on the street for just. Like he was just like out. I was like, I was like that's, <laughs> that's right. Like, there, are they are they just walking and talking on the sidewalk, and then he's just boom, yeah. he's just there. <laughs> he he just grabbed him. Was like, wow, like that's it's it's very very coolly unexpected. Subway scene with Mindy is great. Kirby being back, I love Kirby very much. I wish they utilized her a little bit more. Um, but uh, we've learned that if they great. don't show you die, you can come back. Yes, if they in <laughs> oh also. Are we allowed to spoil? Like, do you want to spoil who the killers are? Can we mention that? Or can we not mention? That? Uh, I mean, it's when this drops, the movie would have been out for a month. So if you're, okay. if you have not if, seen it and you want to see it, just fast forward like ten minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about the killer, um, <laughs> yeah. two of the killers' identities, um, right now. Gwen, I knew she wasn't dead. I was, when you, when you don't see her die. I'm just like, I was mm. like, no, I'm sorry. I was just, I was just like, I was like, I, I know scream. If you, don't, if you do not see them get killed, they are not dead. They, she's pulling a Roman. Um, oh, you you, call, they, you called that. I, I thought she was dead. That was I a did, surprise. I did okay. call it. I was just like, I was like, I just don't believe it yet. Um, and uh, I, yeah, so, I, mean, I was just like, I was like, maybe she is. But I was just like, I feel like that has to be something involved with it. Um, so you don't trust if you don't see them die. And if they get sliced in the arm, you don't trust them either. So mm -hmm. that is my, that's the other. I'm like, I, I was, I, I was thinking Kirby was the killer the whole movie. Like I thought it was gonna be yeah. Kirby. I'm like, and why is she here? What did she, it's been 10 years. It just seems like why pull her back into this? If she's not involved, it just, I was like, she's Hayden Panettiere. She's kind of small. So I'm, I don't know if I'm going to buy that. She's killing all these guys. <laughs> that was my issue. But I was like, so with them when, and then when then uh, when he busts in, he's like, "Oh, she's not with the FBI anymore." And I was like, "Called it." And then no, <laughs> no, she was not. And that's like you know, so much with like the Reddit people were saying, they're like, "Oh, I'm sure it's gonna be Kirby." And then this whole and like they did that a lot, which I love. Like they, you know, they play that like, "Oh, Sue Mocker's still alive." They make a joke yeah. about that because everyone thinks he's still alive, and everyone don't thought pull that Scream it. franchise. Don't do not have that. Matthew they, Lillard they show up and Scream Seven as the kill. Me like, oh no, no, he has not been alive that. this whole time. Come on. Um, no, I, I don't think they'll do that. I hope not. I like how but people were talk. People were talking about like Nev Campbell, uh, Sydney will be behind the mask. I'm like, I don't think no. she would do that. <laughs> that would she, be <laughs> no. It, it makes no sense. I think she's above um, that. I loved. I loved how yeah. Gail referenced her mm -hmm. and said, "Let's you know, she deserves her happy ending. Like let, let you know, let's let her rest." I was watching yeah. the movie. Me remember, they offered her a small role in the film. I'm like, wonder. I yeah. wonder what. Like, if she had said yes, if she was in Scream 6, like, what would her scene or scenes have been? Like, I was, like, mm -hmm. kind of confused about that. Like, maybe comforting Gail in the hospital? Maybe? But yeah. I'm like, 
that's that's i was i could not figure out like where was she gonna fit into this like maybe in the shrine scene like that's show almost, up. yeah i feel like it it would have felt i think it might have been scene. forced because it, it would have been she would have been too i think for this story if, if uh, even though I, I i love that character i was like i think it, this movie actually works better without her i feel it like does. we need to see her again at some point if they do a couple more but uh for this story I, I thought they had Gale in it just to right amount and then yes, Kirby being did. back. But then it still was taking in a lot of time with these fresh, newer characters and it would add a good balance. I think Sydney yeah. coming in at some point and not like really being a part of the finale would have felt weird. So it felt really weird. I think, I think, yeah, I, it's, I, I would love to have her back. And I think, I know like apparently, you know, the rumors of Aaron, so like, the sixth one, she had a role, but seventh, she's m- like more involved than even on Scream Five, like much more heavily involved. So, but it's also like, how are they going to get? Like, how is she going to be like? You know, she has a family and stuff now. So, like, what's her motive to like get out of it? I'm assuming maybe Ghostface starts trying to get her family, which I'm like, you know, he hasn't done that yet. He's never gone after like, um, like a wife and kids yet, and I think that could be interesting. Um, I yeah. I for kids me, are never involved in these movies. So I, I think, think I think at this point cool. Sydney's just stays out of this out of the story unless an entire movie is about one obsessed ghostface killer going after her and like taking her kids. Yeah. And she like couldn't you see her pulling like a Jamie Lee Curtis like Halloween shotgun like 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 her kids are kidnapped and yeah. she's the she's the star. She's the show. Yeah. That could be great. I don't know if they'd be interested in doing that. They seem to have kind of stepped away from Sydney, and the huge box office on Scream Six obviously tells the producers she doesn't need to be in the movie for people to show up. Yeah. So I don't think they'll do that, but I, I like I would love to see that, even if not have that be the next one, but like maybe five to ten years from now, like we do one where her kids are like you know maybe you know preteen or teenagers or a little bit older. And and you know Sydney Ooh, just like again. Sydney goes after the guy who kidnaps her daughters or kids or whatever. But uh, I was just really happy with it. There were a lot of big scares, big jumps. I lo- I love the brutality of it. I love the New York setting that gave a lot of new like style to the to the story yeah. and some of the kill scenes and the Gale scene is oh. amazing. The Gale amazing. scene is perfect. It's, it it's, is perfection. I mean, it's, it's filled so with emotion. It's it's a scene we've never really seen with her. Like it was the first time Ghostface called Gail, which is weird. I was like, wait, what? It is very odd. He doesn't call her in two. Oh wait, no, he calls Randy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he calls outside. Gail. And, yeah, Randy answers it. Yeah, and it's, it's like we've never right. had that. And the just the walking and talking was so suspenseful. And then like the chase and the attack went on for a mm-hmm. while. It did. And I'm she like, made yeah, smart yeah. choices. It wasn't just mm-hmm. her going ah. Like she was like. She was always one one step ahead, and you know, like her her like putting him on call waiting or like what did she yeah. do at the end? Like Can you hold, hold. <laughs> was really <I> funny. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. My brother is like, you know, just a semi horror fan. He's not into these as much as I am. And I'm like, because I'm, like, I'm like, they killed Dewey, yeah. and it kind of makes sense for. I mean, what what is left for Gail to do here? Like there's yeah. not there's not really any story left for her, so it made sense to me that let's have just this really great long chase sequence and we and Gail dies. Like I was just like that makes sense from a story perspective. So when he starts stabbing her, I'm like, and when they come in and they shoot at him, I went I like jumped. Up. I was like, oh my god! I mean, I was Thank in god. so much tension there. And then yeah. we at the end, don't they say Gail is is alive? Like Gail's they say okay. she's, yeah. al- she's okay. Yeah, she was okay. Like, are we gonna are you gonna do this to me again and scream seven like i can't take this anymore <laughs> well yeah that scene i mean that i can't it is like it's the best it's so good and corny cox was awesome amazing in that. great like, great so acting great. in that when great acting. yeah when he starts uh he starts i can't remember the words he, ghostface uses but he starts talking about dewey something about how yeah. you weren't there to save him or something and yeah. she just starts crying and like that i mean that was one of the great moments of the movie too just like oh yeah no know, knowing that history with dewey knowing he died in the last one 
and this guy is just ripping into him and her on this she's call. She's still upset about it. And she's obviously upset. It hasn't been that long. I mean, what's what was it been a year? Was it two a years? Year, yeah. Or one year? One year. One, one year, year since yeah. the event. So yeah, this is fresh in Gail's mind. So like I thought that worked really well. And just that, just the like the pacing and the cinematography of that sequence. I was just really happy. If that was the only good thing in the movie. I would have probably yeah. given it like three and a half stars. <laughs> but most <laughs> of the movie, I was really happy. Like it was really yeah. exciting. And uh, I just walked out feeling good. I was like, I think the Scream franchise is in good hands right now. We're doing we're yeah. doing well. <laughs> I totally <laughs> you know? agree. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think uh, I, I was happy she didn't die. Uh, I, I will say, I think if she ever does die, it should be at least maybe in the next one. And <laughs> I, I want her, I want her to, you know, sacrifice herself. That, like, sacrificing herself because she you know it would be such a full like full circle of like okay she's such a selfish person mm -hmm. you know these first you know several of them and then last one she wasn't so much and this one she kind of went back to her old gale ways which yeah. people were kind of mad about but also, but then people were like well, like you know dewey's gone i think that was always like her rock and like her you know mm -hmm. kind of kept her um from being you know going back to her old ways but he's gone now and now she's like I have nothing to lose. Like there's nothing in my life anymore, which is kind of super heartbreaking. But she had um, she so had I, that picture that 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 picture mm -hmm. of the two of them in her in her place, mm -hmm. and that when they're walking through the shrine, the part that made me tear up was when she see, she sees a little shrine to Dewey, and they and they bring in the music a little bit. I yeah. was like, oh, oh come on, the little. <laughs> doo, 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 doo. Oh, I love it. Love it. There were so but many. Yeah, there were so, so many little touches to other movies. Like they would always be they kind were. of like subtle and that shrine room was really cool and all of the like i mean i was just like freeze frame i want to freeze frame it's like what's in there i want to walk <laughs> I this room. what one of my favorite ones uh before i'm sure we need to get into the movie my <laughs> favorite one was uh tara said she was gonna rush omega beta zeta oh uh, yeah it's like yes i was just like that's what sarah michelle geller i was like hell yeah i love it um <laughs> Yeah, I, and I just felt like some of the newer characters in Scream 5, I was kind of meh about, but they really grew on me in 6. Like, I was yeah, really yes. like, they weren't at the level of like, you know, like a Gale and a Sydney for me yet. But I was like, okay, and like, I like these, this core four. Like, I, yeah. I, I was like, I was on board with them somewhat in 5. But now I'm like, okay, this is a good group of actors, good characters. Like, we're, we're. We're happy. I'm good. Yeah. And now uh, I'm curious Melissa where they go next. They're good. <laughs> I, I know. I'm going to like, go on holiday, go to Hawaii, go to. Well, people are saying like, like they're going to go to Hollywood because like this was kind of like the Scream 2 of the franchise again, mm -hmm. going to college. So wouldn't Scream 7 now bring us to Hollywood again? Like that's an idea. Yeah. I don't really know what that, what, what, what are they making Stab 15? <laughs> like, like, I, I guess don't know they are, what they would be doing there but um it could be yeah i think i think it could be fun or maybe even like the uh we talk about the mini series people are like oh, what if the next one's about like the pro the production of the mini series about them which would be oh like a limited fun. series yeah a limited series yeah um because <laughs> I, I feel like they're kind of pulling the the new the halloween halloween kills halloween ends to where like those directors at least remade in a way the earlier, yeah like those like first a, three halloween yeah like halloween but, kills a lot was in the hospital and that kind of hospital. thing yeah. halloween and then halloween ends more so like a completely different story mm. um even though like Mars is still a little bit oh involved. like season of the witch yeah the season of the witch yeah <laughs> um and, and it's because I, I i didn't catch that and then so i saw like the comparison like the fonts were all the same the colors were the same like with the titles and stuff and i was like oh it's really cool i didn't even notice that and that was scream two or scream six and like you know college <laughs> i was like oh yeah they have to make and did you see the thing about uh before I, this is my favorite part uh uh jennifer connelly played by uh uh parker posey from screen three she might be alive because in the theater jennifer they had connelly her, i think <laughs> her name that, that's that's the actress her? that's a real name that's the Wait, that's the what's her name what's her name in uh in scream three the, she plays gail yeah isn't it like yeah. uh, is it jennifer I think it's Jennifer something. It's not Connelly. Jennifer something. I was just yeah. like, I was like, that has like a real name right now. Yeah. So they're they're saying that Parker Posey's character in Scream Three. Still like, Jennifer jo uh, Jolie. Okay. Jennifer Jolie. Jennifer yes. Jolie. <laughs> jo Jolie. Uh, yeah. So in the in the theater. But she's um, dead in Scream Three. Like to show her dead. No, I guess. But also, it's more of like she got stabbed in the back twice, and then she fell like you know fell to the ground. Yeah. And I mean, if if she can get stabbed in the be. back and scream three twice or three times, and 
die, it doesn't make sense that Mason Gooding's character gets stabbed 50 exactly. times and he's okay. <laughs> exactly. I completely agree. And so, and I loved her. Honestly, Parker Posey's the best part of Scream 3. And, uh, but anyway, her, uh, but how would they even know that yet? Like, how would they, is this a rumor? Like how they haven't started writing the next one. It, it was, it was a screenshot of the, um, in, in Scream 6, there is in, in the theater, there's like uh -huh. those little, uh, those little, like, you know, the letter board things or whatever. And it was something like, it was like an interview with Jennifer Jolly or jo Jolie. Oh, whatever. okay. Uh, and that's, it's, it's in there. So we're like, oh, like it's an, an Easter egg probably. It's just like, I think it's on the same thing with like in the last movie with the YouTube uh, thing with like interview with Kirby Reed, like Survivor. Um, yeah, yeah. I think they did the same <laughs> thing for them. I mean, if Parker Posey's back, I'm not, I don't, I don't mind being a little confused. But I think, I, I think the, I think the greatest success of Scream 6 for me was when they announced last summer that Nev Campbell was not coming back. I said, well, I'm, I'm out. Like, who cares? And it, I was like, man, I really am digging this movie. And by the end, I wasn't really missing Sydney. And that I thought was the biggest success of the movie. Yeah. Like they, they actually managed to do that for me. I wasn't sitting there yeah. like, oh, this is fun and entertaining, but like, where's Sydney? I want Sydney back. And I wasn't thinking that by the second half. And so that was, I thought that was the big success of the movie. Yeah. Now I, I'm I curious totally to see where they go next. Cause I don't really, yeah. I'm like, what? Like, what, like, you know, what are they going to go to like Europe, or, like, like a new locale? Like, a. I just I, I feel like the success of six means that we're going to get at least one more, if not more. But I'm like, yeah, we hmm, have, yeah. what do we where do where does the series go? Exactly. I mean, you yeah. can just make a thousand of them. There's always a new ghost face. There's always a new motivation. It's like you can make so many. It's not like, you know, Michael Myers has to be the same guy all the way through. Although in Halloween ends, they decided, they decided we'll just not really focus on Michael Myers for a while. Uh, but yeah, ghost face, you can do anything with it. So exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I'm very we'll happy see. right now. We're we're at it. We're at a height. I feel like the series has not reached in a while, and uh, yeah. I I I don't have high hopes for like another two sequels being as good as this one. But we'll see. These guys we'll have see, talent, yeah. and uh, would love to see Sydney again if it's the right story. Yes, I would love that. I agree. All right, so let's get into our film today not quite as successful i would say a scream six and that's the vault of horror from Woo! director roy ward baker who i looked up uh yesterday i was like what else does this guy make it's so weird he's got a career in directing that goes back to the 40s and he makes like some kind of high-end film noir dramas he made uh really the the other great movie about the titanic disaster a night to remember from 1958 which is on the criterion collection great great movie and then around 68 he like shifts into tv and horror films and that's what he does mostly throughout the 70s so he's making a lot of these kinds of movies right now he didn't make the uh, tales from the crypt from what we talked about last year but mm -hmm. he made the sequel and I, I mean i guess tales from the crypt did okay i don't think it was like a huge hit but it was enough of a block but it was enough of a box office hit to like warrant a sequel uh just one year later and so this comes out in at the end of march of 1973 and it was not very successful andrew because we did not get a third one <laughs> <laughs> this was this was the end of the yeah. road until the tales from the crypt is revived by hbo in 1989 with uh with that long running series i believe went to all the way to like 97 like it went yeah. a long time it did go a long time. So what did you think of uh, the Vault of Horror? I mean, we can kind of break it down by segment. There's five segments. It's, it kind of opens the same way as Tales from the Crypt, the movie. Mm -hmm. It's like five people, like it, it's like the, an elevator, right? And then, and it's yeah. like, and it doesn't go where they want it to. And then all of a sudden, let's share our dreams. What strange dreams have you had lately? <laughs> yeah. It's a very like kind of muted, like, you know, just kind of like, quiet way to tell horror stories let's just sit around a table and share our dreams so there's like it's weird it's like there's nothing really at stake you're not like you're not watching a, mo a story that's gonna build to something that really amounts to anything it's just like these little stories telling of dreams and so all you can really do in this movie is just kind of like just sit back chill and just enjoy some 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 really good actors in these yeah. really cheesy silly stories of you know, some that are more gruesome than others. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you think of this one? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I think I preferred Tales of the Crypt more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought the stories are just more interesting and honestly a little more scary. I, the one, of course, that sticks out the most was the uh, the Killer Santa Claus. Um, I yes, think those are both of our favorite ones. The best um, one of the I two. I think it's films. also, I liked having a female character in it um, because this one was just all a bunch of annoying men who are like, I, I, I'm a bad person. And I was like, Yes, I like someone who maybe not a you know just a a, a hole. Um, uh, and so I want to. I, I like the stories more. Um, for sure. Um, I I I do wish the ending had not been almost a complete replica of the of Tales <laughs> of the Crypt. Um, now I something I didn't like. It, I mean, I blame WandaVision for this. Um, the room they were in was a hexagon shape, and like the like, sort of like the hexagon, how they're in a hexagon. And I was like, oh, like a hex, like a, like a, like a spell or something, um, because that's what WandaVision always taught us. Because there were those hexagons everywhere, and she put the guys in a hex. I'm like, like, or maybe they're in some kind of weird um, witch spell or something right now. But I guess I mean, based on the ending, I'm just like, oh, well, maybe they do they is that how they died i, I was, is, it, is it the exact same ending as tales of the crypt um and i, I did like it, it, Tales of the crypt correct me if i'm wrong but didn't the opening wasn't it these group of people getting a tour of like the yeah cave or the they were like touring okay. something they weren't yeah they didn't just like they weren't going into an elevator or something and what's happening yeah. it was yeah they were like getting a tour of a crypt of some kind yes. and all of a sudden it was, we yeah. get these stories Yes. And I think for me, like the, it was more satisfying with at first, like, oh, they're on a tour. Okay, cool. They're on a tour. We know why these characters are here and why they're together. They are looking at this place. But in this one, they're just in an elevator that goes down to a spot. I'm like, I was like, oh, I was like, they're probably going, you know, going down to hell, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think they should have weaved at like maybe at least somewhat of a reason of why these characters were together because even just like for a second it just i don't know I, I think it became very it was obviously it was very obvious that's what was happening because you just had seen tales of the crypts so you're like oh okay we know what's happening right now so um yeah, yeah. the uh, tales from the crypts opens with them getting a, a tour of catacombs and then the crypt keeper arrives and he details to each of them how they're going to die yeah like that immediately has more stakes than yes, just sure. let's share our dreams <laughs> it's like okay and you, you and it's funny I, I you like you totally uh got it because i was thinking like what is really lacking in this vault of horror it's that it's all a bunch of white men like at least in tales from the crypt we get this great story with uh joan collins mm -hmm, yeah and it's not just like a man's story all the way through like here it's just i mean and they're all kind of interchangeable right like is there mm -hmm. one is there one actor of the five men in Vault of Horror that you really gravitate towards? Like, they're all kind no. of at the same level. There's not really anything unique about any of them. Yeah, I mean, that's why I was like, oh my, my guy Glenn Strong's made this movie for me because I love seeing her. <laughs> um, and also, and to me, I, and she was the most, yeah, she was she was wonderful. And then of course, well, Bob Ross basically is in it too. Uh, um, <laughs> like, I kind of get over that last part. I was, I was like, this guy's Bob Ross 100%. That's just all I see. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that's, that was what kind of got me. I was just like, I didn't f really feel for any of them. Like they were all just kind of, yeah, they just all are like very rich white men who are not good people. Um, and I was just like, okay, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of lame. And there's not really like, there's not a, like a connecting through line from story to story. They're all just kind of about anything they want. There's like some new supernatural elements. Some, some others don't have that. Like the first story, it's called Midnight Mass, and it's kind of cheesy. Like, yeah. it, like it's, it like turns that. into a vampire story. Yeah, and, and I was kinda, it's not I like that one. It, like you like that one? It's okay. I, it's 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 my second favorite. Um, okay. Mostly, I did I did like. I mean, when the guy just started this, he killed that one guy and killed his sister. And I'm like, oh, you're a jerk. Like, what's going on? Um, and then of course he gets killed by all the vampires. Uh, I, I did like that effect of like the the mirror thing's cool. I was like, oh, that's fun. Like, yeah, he sees himself, but he can't see anyone else in the mirror. Like, it's always really cool. 
Um, and then, the, then when they were hanging him upside down and using him like a like a keg, I was like, that's hilarious and also kind of scary. Okay, uh, now did you watch the, that whole scene play out? Because according to my notes, the three parts of the movie that are in the uncut version and not the regular theatrical cut is that apparently it 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 in the theatrical cut it shows him upside down and they're starting to like take the blood out and it is a freeze frame and then it cuts to the next scene whereas in the uncut version i watched uh, it was like a long push in for like 15 seconds it was it yeah for me out. too so that's yep, the, you must have seen the same version okay okay yeah apparently in the pg cut wow. or whatever like it just it it we see a freeze frame of that moment but we don't actually push in on the blood coming out yeah, they yeah, I I saw the same one because they kind of like press it. and then like when they would you know start draining it, he'd start like like twitching a little bit, and I was like, ooh, that's, that's pretty brutal. I like this. Uh, <laughs> it, I think yeah. that I would say it's a good one to start with. That was a really good one to start with because I I did find it quite creepy. Um, and uh, it's I, I was maybe there was more of a kind of like like he kills people and that is being killed. I wish it was maybe a little more somewhat of a connection between the two. Um, I was just like, why is he killing these people for like no reason? I'm kind of lost. Uh, but um, yeah, it, th th that final scene I think was pretty cool. What I felt like what hurt the movie a little was that most of the stories are very short, and I feel like yes. it's the movie's God, eighty. The one. movie's eighty six minutes long. The last story, the fifth one, is very long. I felt like that went very on very long, while. way too long. And the first four brief i mean i mean at least a couple of the first four are like 10 minutes maybe like they're not long like they're just like you're just like it's like a little as you said like a three sentence horror story like you're just you're with these characters for a couple scenes and then there's like a, an aha moment of like violence or something and then we're off to the next story i felt yep. like i felt like we could have maybe taken out one or two of them and stretched out the better ones like the vampire yeah. story i think i might have liked better if we just got to know the characters more it just yes. felt very rushed, and I was like, "Okay, okay, oh, they're vamp. Okay, now we're on to the next story." Um, yeah, I just felt like that's what I liked about the house had dripped blood. I don't remember if it had five; it might have been three or four, but each story felt very complete. Whether it was twenty minutes or twenty-seven minutes, or whatever it was, like it had a complete story from beginning to end. Whereas this one, it felt like you're just getting a little glimpse. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's supposed to be a dream, I guess, so that's okay. But yeah, I think the the second one, tidy house um yeah uh what's what, what's called tidy the, house the neat the neat job the neat job i think that one was a very good length i think that one mm -hmm. um it it wasn't too long it wasn't too short like it was very clear you know e everything was laid out very well um and the pacing was good um and i think that's also why i think i mean glenn Strong's i love seeing and so i liked um and also i think it's the stress of like yeah, she has like a very, very strict husband, and like those yeah. kind of stresses me out. And like, she has to make sure everything's perfect. I'm like, oh, this is kind of, uh, this is it, it felt a little modern as well. I think that's a very huge topic today of just, uh, you know, men. I mean, I think it's always been a topic, but uh, yeah, like a man really trying to control like his entire life and, um, I don't know. It, it it was it was interesting to see that story of like oh like this guy's an a hole because yeah he he literally was, makes his wife do everything perfectly if she doesn't do it perfectly if one thing's messed up he's mad at her um this is a very abusive <laughs> relationship yeah. um and I think they I feel like I hadn't really seen in that sense of abusive relationship with mm. them like in these old movies before and it, it's you know it's not physically abuse it's it's uh you know mentally and emotionally abusing or making her feel like she can't do anything right i'm like man that's really sad yeah um, and he picked he picked the and, wrong moment to really scream at her when she was holding a hammer or whatever yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea that was good um <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was, was my favorite like that, that was my favorite of the five for a couple reasons i just felt like i felt like glennis johns is like the strongest performance in the movie like yeah. when he's yelling at her in the kitchen but he's like, like he he's looking for an item in the in the mm -hmm. cupboard or something, and it's not there. And he's just like, "Well, what's wrong with you? Like, you need to get this stuff. Like, if one uh, is 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 out and thrown away, you need to go get another one." And we leave that scene with her in tears, like she has tears yeah. on her cheeks, and he's just like done with her, walking away. Uh, so I just thought her performance was the strongest in the movie. Like, I could really identify with her. I completely, yeah. Her performance was definitely the best, um, and for me too. 
Uh, and I remember when he was explaining the whole system, I was like, this system's confusing as hell. I don't know what he's talking about. And I was like, no wonder she doesn't know. Cause I was like, I can't understand what he's saying. Like there's three. So you gotta do this. And like, when that's gone, I'm just like, I was like, this is confusing. And like, who cares? Uh, yeah. At this point. Uh, yes. Yeah, she, she was the strongest performance and that story was good. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, supernatural at all. It was just, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> crazy neat freak well you could argue the last bit of it is which we'll talk about the oh, yeah, very last that. shot but oh, uh, yeah. i also identified with the story because my partner likes things very very clean and i am not a very clean person and there have been a couple moments in our many years where you know <laughs> i've you know tipped something over and he kind of loses it and uh red wine does not go well with uh, white uh rugs by the way no, absolutely not. And it's funny. <laughs> so I, I could I, like I identify say, with I could identify with the story a little bit because I uh, share my life with someone who is also kind of like he wants he's not abusive, of course, but he's like, you know, he likes everything very clean. And so I'm always yes. like if if something's a little bit out of line, like, you know, I've, I've, there's been moments where I'm I'm like scrubbing it. I'm like, come on. And then oh, maybe, maybe <laughs> pull the rug over. <laughs> you know, I could it's identify with that. <laughs> I Hey, I was I wasn't gonna mention. Yes, my boyfriend is very, very. He is much clean. Like I'm a clean yeah. person, but I'm like I can leave that until later. Like it doesn't bother me too much. Right, like um, a sink, like a, can, like a like a cluttered sink kind of a thing. Yeah, like I'll like I'll take I I will take care of this. I'm not yeah. gonna do it right now. Or like I might go and like leave you know something on my bed for the day. Like I don't really mind it too much because <laughs> um, I know I'm gonna get to it. He's yeah. not like that. Yeah, like, he's like, gotta be done now. Clean, orderly, like. <laughs> his cabinets are all organized and it, yeah. it, it, I will say like, it stresses me out a little bit. Um, when like, yeah, something does happen. I'm like, Oh crap, he's not going to like that. Um, <laughs> and of course, I mean, it's, it's, uh, he'll get over it. Yeah. Uh, and he's not, of course he's not abusive. Like this guy is, yeah. um, he not made me cry about it. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I was just like, yeah, I feel you girl. Like it, it can be stressful. Um, so, so it, it, it's not, a, it's not a story that keeps amping up like five, six times. It's kind of like he makes her cry. And then she keeps making mistakes, right? She's trying to cl trying to clean this, and then she's pulling the rug over, and then she's like going into the basement to get a nail, and she's trying to make things right, trying to fix everything. And then he comes home at that moment, and he goes down in the basement. He's like, "What are you doing?" And he just starts screaming at her, and she starts crying again. And then Glennis Johns is this amazing scream of just like, "Ah!" And then she just hits him <laughs> on yep. the head in this pretty decent effect where when yeah, it cuts to him it's like the the hammer's just like stuck in into his skull and he just like falls back and yeah. what i would say the supernatural element to it is is a little bit the next not supernatural maybe but like we the the, the story ends with him basically being cut up into a bunch of little pieces and his organs and she has laid them out very neatly in like 30 different jars in the basement oh yeah now this is the second part I read in the PG cut or whatever. Uh, let's see, the cut version becomes a still frame when the hammer makes contact with the head in the version I watched, like he fell back, like you saw it, you saw some blood. And then the ending shows four shelves of her husband's body parts neatly preserved in jars, including one labeled odds and ends, which I liked. Uh, Love that one. The cut version shows only the first two shelves. But the okay. uncut goes all the way down the shelf. Okay. So ridiculous. Like, what? Who cares? Like, why would why would that oh, change the anyway. rating? But yeah, uh, kids don't know what it is. I'm like, did you buy that she had actually done that? That felt a little supernatural to me. <laughs> like she actually put all of these body parts in jars. I was down for it. And I she wasn't. She wasn't oh, crying. She was like on cloud nine in the last. She was so happy. And I'm like. All right, you go, Glennis. <laughs> I I was rooting for her. I, mean, I honestly, I think I didn't. I, one of the reason this is probably, I guess, one of the only non technically non supernatural ones, right? Well, no, the 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 buried the uh, the buried alive one as well. But um, I I uh, I think this one, like, I mean, you and I both are related to it because we're like, oh yeah, like we have, we have partners who are a little more clean than the other. I think every relationship <laughs> is probably like that where one person is one is than more the other one. clean than the other. Yeah. And so it is a little relatable, which you're like, I think that, yeah, it, I think that's probably why it is my favorite. Cause yeah, it's, it, I can't relate to vampires or being buried alive or 
having a magic hand painting. I don't know. You haven't been buried uh, alive yet? I have not been buried alive. <laughs> I hope one day soon, but not yet. That doesn't um, sound fun. <laughs> I know. It's really sad. But yeah. yeah. You'd find things to do, you know. Yeah. Songs you love Wait, to sing and have my phone. <laughs> you'll have yeah, as long as you have your phone and you have some Wi-Fi, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be I'll still be tweeting about the Oscars. I'll be buried alive still tweeting. <laughs> Life Who was your favorite winner in 1987? <laughs> um, so yeah, so then there's three more segments. I mean, I would say the other one I did, I did like the third one, This Trick Will Kill You, where uh, yes, it's in I India did. and there's this there's this young woman who like charms this like rope to come out of, uh, of a basket uh, with her playing the flute. And these these this older couple like basically wants that power. And so they kill her. And then the wife or whatever, she's like climbing it. She's like, I'm doing it. And then she goes, ah! <laughs> he screams and uh, disappears. And then blood starts to form on the ceiling. That one was kind of fun. I like that one. That was good. I did. I had that as my... Uh, That's your number three? That was my number three, yeah. Okay. Um, cause, yeah cause, <laughs> That'd be my number I, two. I didn't, I didn't... I thought maybe she was going to fall and then like, you know, die from that. It was an unhook or something. Yeah. But yeah, her... Um, what, what I thought was originally was going to happen was she was going to climb up. She saw something from up there, and that's why she screamed. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that's what she probably did. Like she screamed because she saw something, and then she fell and died. Um, yeah. But her disappearing, I didn't expect that. So that that did catch me off guard. Um, and I liked that. I was like, I like that's a, that was a good one. Um, and the way the rope moved, it looked like it was CGI. Even though I know it's not, it did it use strings, I guess. But it looked weird. Maybe it was on my, on my TV. Yeah, that it really probably looked like wasn't. it was like a 2000s. Uh, thing but they just probably just you know had strings attached to it yeah just, they probably have strings yeah. or they had something yeah. underneath like just out of frame probably someone kind of like pulling it up it probably wasn't that yeah difficult. that would probably be not, if that yeah. was the first uh example of cgi, CGI. i would <laughs> first been like oh interesting yeah uh, decades before but um yeah i mean again i think that's actually an example of a story in the movie i think if that had been 30 minutes it would have been too much but i think what was it 12 mm -hmm. to 14 minutes something like that it, yeah, it was pretty long. short like it was, it was just good. it was kind of it was kind of unique it was like oh I've, i don't think i've seen a story about like an older couple who want to kill this gifted young woman who's able to charm this rope <laughs> so that they could like take over her power i thought that was interesting um, and then yeah, Bargain, good. Bargain and Death, the fourth one, is about the guy buried alive. Yeah. It's got kind of like one jolt when that woman opens the door and screams. That was good. Yeah. yeah that was probably, that was, yeah, that was definitely at the towards the bottom of the list. It's because it, I don't know, I... I it's kind of basic. It was a little basic, yeah. Um, you know, insurance money, and it's like, I was like, are you even gonna, like, I was like, do you really think this guy's gonna come get you? Like, that's a, that's a... Get some high hopes for him. I did like the him popping out of the coffin or out of the yeah the uh I guess the coffin um casket I guess is more so um that that got me that that was good that was a nice little jump scare yeah. but um it, it it was a little too short I think I, I wanted like one other thing to maybe happen mm -hmm. in it uh but it wasn't horrible it wasn't the best but um. And then that last one was like really... the last one. I think would have been okay if it was shorter, but the last one for some reason goes on way longer, and it's not one of the stronger stories. It's like, not at I, all. like there's a there's an interesting nugget at the center of it. I like the idea of like someone who has the power. He's with his paintings to like he just he just draws a little red dot on a forehead on his painting of a person, and then that guy who's in the room takes the gun and then points it at the same spot on his forehead and pulls it like that was cool like i like i like i like the idea of it it just it felt long like the other ones kind of wrapped up after 10 to 15 minutes and this one just kind of stretched on and on and on but uh my greatest joy with the fifth one was learning that okay this is the part i saw a year ago yeah, I was supposed to be watching. <laughs> let me time. let me just tell that story real quick so we we okay. so we talked about tales from the crypt a year ago on film at 50 and I watched Tales from the Crypt on YouTube and I watched it late at night. And I put it on and I had my notes <laughs> and I was watching it. And I, you know, this happens here and there well, all the time. Uh, if I put on a movie after 10 p.m., usually like I'll fade at some point and then I'll come back in maybe. Uh, so I try to watch movies like I watched this in the middle of the day yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to watch movies for the podcast like during the day and not like at after 10 at night. 
especially after this happened, because I faded out, which I, I thought maybe for five minutes, I, I thought I may, oh, I just faded because I was, it was right after story three of Tales from the Crypt. And then I fell asleep at some point, I woke up and then I watched the last 20 minutes of what I thought was Tales from the Crypt. What had happened while I was asleep was that Tales from the Crypt ended, YouTube just started the Vault of Horror, which I guess is also on YouTube. And that played for the majority of the running time. And then I woke up in the fifth story of Vault of Horror thinking I was still watching Tales from the Crypt. And so on the recording a year ago, I said, so what did you think about the story of the guy, the painter, with the, the bearded guy who, who gets killed at the end, who's the painter? And you were like, what? And I I had just like totally, totally messed up there because... Like the whole story ends in Vault of Horror, like Tales from the Crypt ends. Mm -hmm. I had not seen Tales from the Crypt before. So I thought that was just the ending of the movie. And I'm like, so if I had just been watching a different version, if it had just been like a DVD or a Blu-ray, if it had been like on a on a site where it just had the one movie, this wouldn't have happened. It's because YouTube does not want you to leave their site. They want you to keep watching. Mm -hmm. And so they thought, oh, this guy just finished Tales from the Crypt. He'll obviously want to watch Vault of Horror, not knowing I was sawing logs on the couch. <laughs> and that that I would wake up at like where, like in terms of running time, like I would have left off in Tales yeah. from the Crypt. It's so crazy to me that that would have happened because it, it felt like, oh, I probably just drifted off for five minutes and then I'm watching the end of the movie. So I don't know. It was very strange. <laughs> but I just felt I was like a, a sense of relief watching Vault of Horror finally a year later for the first time. Like, oh, OK, I, I did see this ending a year ago. So I so the mystery has been solved. And what I learned is that uh, Vault of Horror, I don't think, is quite as good as Tales from the Crypt. It is not. I the agree. whole thing started off on the best note with the Santa Claus story. Nothing it ever did. came close to that. That was great. No, no, nothing did. I agree. And I remember when yeah we started talking about the end of it. I was just like, I was like, well, what man in this? Like, what man in the painting? And I was like, and, dude, I watched the wrong movie. And I and I rewatched because I put these on YouTube, Andrew. I rewatched just that segment of like you just kind of like going like this and like going like. This. It's like what? And like, you're so and you're and I'm like I'm like no 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 no. It's maybe it's not the fifth story. Maybe it's the fourth. But it, yeah, it's the guy with the <laughs> beard, and you're like, and I've and, and it's never happened. And what? How long I've been doing this? Two and a half years doing film of fifty. I've never had a guest just be like, I don't think that's in the movie. Because <laughs> I did remember. Oh, I God. remember. I did fade. I did like fall asleep, and I wasn't sure how long. So I was like, maybe I'll get away with it. <laughs> I didn't. I totally, <laughs> it it totally backfired. But uh, but yeah, that that has finally been resolved now. The end of the film, so the part that I really remembered from a year ago was like the painting falling over and the and him getting uh, run over by the by the vehicle, and then you see like the painting like uh, dissolving almost, like it's just running, and clearly yeah. he has died, and that was a that was a striking image. I like how the story ends. It just I, yeah. I don't know if it's the main actor in the story, the length of it, it just never quite came to life. Although there are some parts of it that are interesting um the part where you see his head get run over that was i'm sure that was not in the pg version or the i'm oh, sorry the uh the no the other version. the other part that was cut was in tail five when the publisher gets his hands chopped off by the paper cutter oh really the camera dollies in as he screams holding out his bleeding stumps uh that was not in i guess the the pg theatrical cut i don't hmm. know if Maybe it just cuts to like him screaming and that. Maybe we don't see it happen. That actually looked pretty yeah. good. That, looked, that, that was a good effect. Good. Like he, like it looked like they got chopped off and then it cut to a close up of the hands hitting the ground and he's like ah that, that looked good. I was like okay, it did good look on you makeup makeup artist. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there there's a lot to like in Vault of Horror. It's not a bad film. It's just very for me middle of the road. Like there's not. Yeah. David there's not theory. like it there's nothing in it that's good enough to where i'd say you have to see it whereas tales from the crypt has that yeah. amazing opening uh scene with the, the the story with the joan collins and then that yeah follow-up scene where that guy gets in the car accident and he walks home and it's in we're in his point of view like the beginning of halloween michael myers 
And then mm -hmm. he looks down at that table with the mirror on it. And we see this grotesque face as he screams, as I think I mentioned on that episode a year ago, I had seen that when I was like six or seven years old. And oh, it was yeah. an image. That's right. It was an image from a horror film I had uh, that had stuck with me, stayed with me for a long time, and I and for the okay. longest time I wondered what that was from. I didn't know what it was. I think I just caught it on TV one day when I was very young, and it wasn't until much later that I was like, "Oh, that's in the 1972 Tales from the Crypt." <laughs> like it took me a, a long time to find that. But um, let's see some other trivia about the movie. Yeah. Uh, so. None of the film stories are actually from the Vault of Horror comic. So I guess there was a comic uh, yes. book called The Vault of Horror, but that. none of the stories here are from that. They're mostly from hmm. Tales from the Crypt. And the only one that's not Tales from the Crypt is the story we like the best, uh, segment two, which is from uh, The Neat Job which is from exactly. shock suspense stories, uh, some sort of comic that's called that. Mm. Um, let's see. This was a rare horror anthology film of the time that Peter Cushing does not appear in. He was in Tales from the Crypt briefly. He was also in the House That Drip Blood. He's in one around this time called Asylum. He's in one around this time called And Now the Screaming Starts, which is also 73, which, by the way, is very strange. I read that Peter Cushing could not be in the Vault of Horror because he was shooting at the same time a film called And Now the Screaming Starts. And Now mm. the Screaming Starts is directed by the same guy who made the Vault of Horror. So explain that one to oh, me. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> what? How How is Roy Ward Baker directing both movies? Peter Cushing is in the other one and Cushing can't be in the Vault of Horror because he was in the other film but they're both directed by the same guy can you figure that out for me <laughs> that is that is very very odd. that doesn't make I, logical sense right <laughs> it, it makes no sense at all <laughs> like unless there was someone else like ghost directing the other film like that I like can't. i don't it doesn't make any sense <laughs> on and off days who knows that that, that that makes absolutely no sense pushing <laughs> peter cushing said to director roy, roy ward baker he said i i just i can't do uh, your vault of horror film, Roy. I'm still, we're still shooting, and, and now the screaming starts. <laughs> and Roy's like, I got one foot on this set, and I got another foot on that. <laughs> like, I can do both. I don't, I don't, there, there must be some something there that <laughs> I didn't uh, get all the correct information, but uh, I thought that was interesting. If Sarah uh, Paulson can do all those Brian Murphy shows at once, he could do it. But... Maybe, yeah, maybe while uh, Peter Cushing was preparing, like, between setups, maybe that's when Roy uh, was shooting Vault of Horror. <laughs> maybe, yeah. But, uh, I mean, so, it, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like they could have really just divided these up over time. You know, maybe. It's, it's all anthrology. Stuff. Yeah, they could have just divided, like, they could have filmed, you know, each one a month apart and somehow things got, yeah. I, if, I had, if, I had is, to, if I had to make an if I had to make an educated yeah happening. if I had to make an educated guess it would be that Peter Cushing was never meant to be in Vault of Horror and someone just got their information wrong there maybe he just wasn't ever going to be in this one that's what makes sense okay. to me but um, yeah me too Vault of Horror was shot on location uh, at Twickenham Studios Twickenham Twickenham uh, they shot it very quickly it was it started in August of seventy two and they wrapped in September of seventy two. Uh, the reviews were not kind. Andrew, are you shocked? I believe it. I believe it. I'm not shocked uh, at all. LA Times <laughs> called the film a very tepid, static affair, despite the presence of many luminaries of the English stage and screen. Uh, and monthly film bulletin said that the film was less satisfactory than Tales from the Crypt. Like the I, yeah. there were on Wikipedia, it had like eight reviews, and like the. Like the kindest one was three out of five star. That was the wow. kindest review. Yeah, I. I so they're can... like, they're not really like you know saying it's the worst of the year, but they're like, yeah, we've seen better. Yeah, I agree. This was one of the most interesting pieces of trivia I found about it. This film was re-released as Tales from the Crypt Two in the Southern United States in 1981. <laughs> Very interesting. So eight years later, they said, you know, I don't think people knew. 
people didn't know that the Vault of Horror was a follow-up to Tales from the Crypt. How about we just re- re-release it as the as the same movie, but call it Tales from the Crypt 2, and people will just assume we shot it last year. <laughs> I'm, I did it perform, did it say? With, oh, it with didn't say. New name? I can't imagine it did very well. Like, it, by 81, oh, like, so after, after Halloween, after Friday the 13th, after Alien, who is showing up for this? Like, this is, like, very oh. old-fashioned. This oh, is yeah. old-fashioned for 73, I would argue. This feels very, like, 66. This does not feel like 73 already. So to go, go to a movie theater in southern United States to see Tales from the Crypt 2 in 81, and this is the movie you get, you'd be like, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, yeah, it would be completely lost. But I thought that it was, reminds me of, did, um, didn't that come up on an episode we did on Silent Night, Bloody Night? Didn't they re-release that movie under different titles over many yes. years? Was it um, like yeah, 80, because... 81, they re-released it under a different title? I remember, oh, I remember when, when I when I had watched it. There was a there was a different title. Yeah, when I, the version it had like I three. Got, um, I forgot what it was. I forgot what version I got. But yeah, it was so weird. Um, and there's a, there was a movie recently. I really thought like I had like a stroke or something. Um, <laughs> there was a movie that was being just advertised a lot. It was something involving a guy. With, I think he had superpowers. I'm not quite sure. I forgot what the name, the original name of it. And then it was gone. And I was like, oh, I guess. And I, I didn't want to see it at all. And then like six months later, the, tra- the trailers are back for this movie. I'm like, wait, I was like, this movie already came out. What's happening? It was a different name underneath of the movie. And I was so lost. I was just like, this makes no sense. I was like, I, was like, I know this movie was not called this. And I saw previews for it. I the movies all the time. And then I had looked it up and it turns out the, the, uh, the, the predicted numbers for the movie were so bad that um they ended up selling the movie to mtv mm. and they did different marketing for it and it changed the name of the movie before, before it was even released so it's just whether they would like have a trailer for a movie out for yeah. months and months in theaters it wasn't like on it wasn't on youtube it was in theaters and then they just never released it they just changed uh, their mind was and it the it the poughkeepsie theaters. tapes i remember i saw in the late 90s, early 2000s, for about six months, I saw a trailer for a film called The Poughkeepsie Tapes. And then it never, <laughs> and it never came really? out. That's so weird. <laughs> I was it's, like, it's, oh, it's hey, I, I, it was like a running joke with my friend Brandon. We'd see a new horror film and I'd say, do you think they're going to show a trailer for The Poughkeepsie Tapes? And then there would be. <laughs> and then it never came out. And then just, I think it That's eventually so went direct to video or something. Like a year later, it just never opened. So I'm like, how do they pay for all those trailers? Like, doesn't that cost money? <laughs> I know, exactly it's a, how much money they lose from advertising yeah uh, from uh advertising that never happened it makes no sense but i think that's the most deceptive thing you can do is re-release a oh, movie yeah. that's already come out under a different title and hope to get more business I, that just always feels very strange like i don't think i don't think very many people would be yeah. dumb enough to do that like to see a movie and then two years later or 10 years later, you go to the same movie thinking it's something different. I think most people are smarter than that, but it's still oh, yeah. not, does not sit well with me. It's like, you got one shot, like you release the movie, whatever happens, that's it. <laughs> you don't get to re-release it, flop, it, it flop, flops, eight yeah. years later under a different title. I mean, there is a film we've talked about uh, called Billy Jack, which came out in 71, did not do well. The, the studio behind it did not market it well it, it just barely came out and then the director bought the rights back to the movie the writer director actor in the film and then he like took it upon himself to re-release the movie himself under the same title but with new marketing oh. in 73 and the movie became a huge box office hit wow that's like one of the rare instances where that happened where a movie came out nobody went two years later they market it a different way, and then it became a hit. Like, you don't see that happen ever. No, never. Uh, it happened, that, it happened yeah. with that one. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that weird? That is so... I, I, I don't understand. Uh, how do you even get the budget to even do that? <laughs> I, I agree. Like, one shot, and, like... You're, it's like... um, What's it called? It might be... No, back to screen. The, the screen, the third the season they did that was in production, and they just, like, kept it away. Yeah. Uh, I, Under I, lock I think, and key. <laughs> yeah, and then BH1 bought it. Yeah, and then uh, it was like they six released episodes. It over like, yeah, and they just like, then they just released it over three days. They just had two episodes. That's a when day. that's like, when Scream was no. not Scream was not at a good place when we were waiting for Scre- season three of Scream the series 
for two years or whatever that was. I was like, this is not, so Scream bad. is not at a good place right now. It is it weird is to think not. that between Scream 4 and the two new Screams that we've had like a series that did yeah, okay. I don't think it really did that well. It's, but usually uh, when the when the TV series comes, then that's it for the movies. Like, we're done. Yeah. And that and it, did but, not happen. Here. It, 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 someone was saying it, it would be kind of interesting if in Scream 7, they did a miniseries and the actors from those TV shows were in the, the miniseries of Scream 7. If that's what the, the direction they're they going They would for. never do that. There wouldn't they be would enough people who it. would know. But I, but I think it's kind of cool. I mean... <laughs> like... Very few people would pick up on that. I watched the whole series. I don't know if I would remember who was in the series. So. <laughs> I just knew one of the actresses hit on me and uh, one day, and I just oh, I'll never forget that. One of the very, actresses. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, from one Scream of the, the series. Yeah, hit on her, you. Yeah, she, she, well, flirting. I want to say hit on. She like flirting. Uh, is that yeah. the one? Is that the one time you'll go hetero as if it's an actor from Scream? Like a woman from Scream? Honestly. Oh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. She, she was my favorite character <laughs> in the TV show. So I'm like, oh, I, was, I, dug, I was totally cool. I was like, I was like dang. She, 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 uh, she played the, um, the really rich girl, the, uh, the, uh, the really pretty rich girl who was like super, um, I forget what her name was. But okay. she, she became a good character in the end. Uh, she was like a pretty entertaining character. Um, and yeah, she was at a grocery store that I was uh doing like demos at for work and uh yeah she was with her friends and she was talking to me and just it was great I loved it it was very sweet <laughs> did you did you tell her you had seen her and scream I did not say anything. oh okay. no. so th this so this grocery store is magical it's where all the uh it's where all the um Hollywood people go all the famous people I saw Michael Keaton there um I saw oh, okay. uh Sam Elliott twice um and then i forget his name since suicide squad he's australian he's a really big tall guy real buff mm. um he played boomerang i think in suicide i think his name is boomerang um he was very very nice as well uh and then lenny kravitz was there right before i got there i just missed them uh, but what the, the man the manager was just like lenny kravitz was in here earlier i was like oh my god it's it's just, it's called a vintage grocers in malibu mm. um and it's a quite a little hot spot for have you have you ever had a run-in whether there or somewhere else with anybody who was in the first scream any any actor from the first scream have you ever had a run-in with them in person no never that is a, that is a dream i would love to i mean <laughs> i feel like i could honestly courtney cox lives in hollywood so i feel like i could run into her one day um you you would play it cool would, i would probably play it cool um the only one that I've only had a run in with Molly Shannon and um, the mom from Seventh Heaven. And those are literally run ins, like physically. Like, I almost ran into the mom's seventh heaven. And then Molly Shannon almost hit me with her bike. And I was just like, mm. I don't care. <laughs> hit me with your bike. I, I told mind. you my Nev Campbell story, right? Like, met her once. Did I tell you that story? I don't think you have. Did I ever tell you that story? So, no. I moved, so I moved to LA in 2003 for film school. I, it was my freshman year at Loyola Marymount University. And it, and I went to, I don't, is it still a thing in November when I, when I lived there every November, there was the Los Angeles International Film Festival at the Arclight and okay. they would play mostly like the big kind of end of the year awards, Beatty movies that weren't out okay. yet. So the ones coming out like Christmas, like they would premiere it in November. And in November of 03, uh, one of the screenings was of her movie called The Company, where she plays a ballet dancer in a film directed by Robert Altman. And I bought a ticket and I'm like, I love Nev Campbell. The actors showed up for that festival. They at least did then. Oh, cool. And so I went to uh, I went to the screening and it was a theater where they had like this uh, one row kind of like kind of uh, near the near the screen, but far enough away where you weren't like, you know, with your neck all the way back. And I when I go to like I just did at Sundance a couple months ago, I sit near the front because I like to be near the talent like when they come up for the q a i don't like to be in the back like doing this like i like to yeah. be right there and so i was like nev campbell's gonna be here i'm sitting in the front row and before the movie started i saw she walked over and uh she hugged scott wolf who played her brother oh, on yeah. party of five 
yeah and i'm sitting there I'm like, oh. i had a big crush on him he's cute oh yeah oh my god like in party <laughs> like in the 90s like in uh like a party of five and go like that movie go like scott wolf is so hot i was like he was one of my early crushes and oh, yeah. uh so the movie ends and there was like a little q a if i remember right and then nev campbell dispersed and i'm like oh well that was cool i got to see her and then i i, I like walked out of the theater i'm walking towards the exit and there she is talking to someone just standing wow. there and i'm like i might never ever see her again like let's just let's this could be awkward but let's and i'm like 18 years old or 19 i was Aww. like you know very fresh faced and and uh, she finishes talking to the person and for and, that, and it, when it, when it comes to actors and like it's always comes down to like usually 2 or 3 seconds like they have a lull <laughs> you know and it's not like I'm coming up to her in a restaurant or something that's kind of off limits but if it's like at a premiere yeah. of a movie like I can so I just I, I tap I think I like tapped her on the shoulder and I said hi Nev hi Nev <laughs> uh, my name's Brian I just wanted to tell you I loved your film it was really great and uh, and and uh, she 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 smiled at me and she put out her hand like that she put out her arm and I shook her hand. <laughs> That's so great. And I said, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Scream trilogy. It's three of my favorite horror films of all time. And I saw the smile kind of <laughs> drain. As soon as I mentioned Scream, this is late 03. Oh, oh, She's okay. in this big dramatic film directed by Robert Altman. She's trying to like distance herself at this point from the from the genre. And she's doing more indie dramas at this point. So I mentioned Scream and Trilogy and how much I loved it. And she was like, thank you. And then someone came up. It was like her publicist or someone. And she just kind of nodded at me and kept walking. And that was kind of it. It was like maybe 10, <laughs> 15 seconds. It wasn't like a long chat. But uh, <laughs> it was so beautiful. Like just oh, yeah. absolutely. She still is 20 years later. Oh, yeah. She's gorgeous. In November of 03, just like knockout gorgeous. I was like, oh, my God. Some of these actors you see in person, you're like, oh, uh, but some of them are really just as beautiful in person. And I just thought oh, yeah. it was really sweet for her to acknowledge me, a young kid, and like put her hand out, shake my hand. Like, I just thought that was nice of her to do that. She could have just looked at me and kept walking. So I felt like that showed some of her character for her to take just that yeah. short amount of time with me. I was nobody. So that was cool. That's my Nev Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I would love to meet her one day. But uh, that's oh, it. I've never, I've all. never bumped into in person anyone else from the first movie. Like, like all that time there, I never bumped into like uh, Matthew Lillard or. Well, you know what, my um, my Jamie Kennedy friend does. Um, he does stand up, and I know um, Jamie Kennedy did stand up with him one day. Like he was, at, he was at the show as well. I didn't get to go to it, but I was like, oh, if he ever does again, I was like, my friend is very funny, and I love to go see him. And I was just like, Jamie Kennedy or something like that is a win win you know what we need to do you know what, how we need to meet in person we need to go to one of these scream conventions where it's oh, a yeah. f campbell skeet ulrich and matthew lillard and jamie kennedy are at a lot of them have, they you, are, have yeah. you seen have you seen online like those oh, four yeah, i love it will do these a lot throughout the year yeah, all over the it. country that's something we need to, <laughs> we need to do together oh, I, would, I would 100 go yeah. and just sit in the well, front row um, like yeah you know <laughs> they're having one here sometime soon um i heard of it i have to i'll have to see where it is um but i, I know just, they are doing one here soon and i, was I just saw yeah in the last week i saw an ad on twitter or something that it was happening with the four of them and i think it was in washington or yeah might have been in seattle okay but it's not just la they go they do it all over the country and stuff and Nev Campbell takes it. You think Nev Campbell wouldn't do it? <laughs> in some ways, I'm like kind of, kind of surprised when she's at a bunch of them. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But go for it. They, they yeah. get paid. You, you know, you got, you're oh, yeah. an actor. You got to get paid somehow. A ton of money off of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, back to Vol. <laughs> back to Vol. Which, uh, which we're going to wrap up here. Uh, my last uh, two pieces of trivia about the movie was that unlike Tales from the Crypt from 72, no story in the Vault of Horror was ever remade in the Tales from the Crypt series on HBO. Oh. Like the Santa Claus story was done again in the HBO oh. anthology series, but nothing in Vault of Horror was remade in that. You think in the eight-year run of that show, they would have, or seven-year run, whatever it was, they would have done one of these stories. Like you think yeah. they could have gotten a really great actress to play 
uh, in the neat job of like, yeah, like for expanding sure. that, expanding that a little longer and ending it with like the, the hammer to the four. Like I could see them doing that on HBO in like 91 with like Linda Fiorentino or someone like a, like a kind of an up and coming actor of the early nineties. And, uh, but they, yeah, they never oh, yeah. remade anything for that. And this movie got one award nomination, Andrew. What do you think it was for an Oscar? Um, so this came up, well. this this would have just dropped, uh, I think last week, our episode about Sisters, a horror film by Brian De Palma. And this uh, that film was also nominated at the same festival or ceremony, whatever it was. But uh, Vault of Horror got a nomination for the Golden Scroll for Best Horror Film at the 1975 uh -huh. Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films. I'm assuming that was just like a like a very small ceremony that I think grew in the 80s. I think you see movies like Aliens and some of these like getting like 15 nominations. And I don't oh, know yeah. if it ever was big enough to like bring in talent, but uh, it's on IMDb, so I have to talk about it here. I mean, yeah. It didn't win, though. Applaud, applaud. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean. Didn't win. Can that would have been a, that would have been a strange win. It. That would have been very strange. Yeah. So yeah. Not... So uh, yeah. As we wrap up our discussion on Vault of Horror, I would say if like you if you watch the seventy two Tales from the Crypt, you really love it. Like it might be worth a look. Like it might be worth a look to see yeah. the follow up. But I just think it's it's not quite as good as Tales from the Crypt. I think you can probably skip this one if you do watch it. Uh, definitely check out the Glennis Johns segment. That's my favorite. I think both of our favorites. And yeah. watch the uncut version. Like just it has a little bit more. Uh, blood and and gore that I think sure. helps makes the endings yeah. of three of those it's segments a, better was... like it wouldn't be as good in Absolutely. the PG version <laughs> so I watch, the, yeah, un yeah. watch yeah. the uncut if you're gonna watch it all right that takes us to our final two segments uh what would you pair this with in the divine double feature what's a modern film that you would pair with vault of horror see it's hard because I, feel like I, I couldn't remember who i had said for uh tales of the crypt i believe i said uh scary stories to tell in the dark is why i did oh one, yeah I yeah i think so mm -hmm. i think i one. did so with this one i'm gonna go with uh five minutes into annabelle comes home Ooh, um, okay because i actually do enjoy that movie because it it's it's you know the characters are at the house of you know the warren's house and they break into the little uh, museum of all the haunted stuff and everything they touched, each story like comes to life and there's like that that ghost or whatever. Um, like it, it's, it's a tons of different little stories in the movie um, involving like the werewolf, the um, the bride who like killed her fiance, the guy with the, um, the little um, dimes, the, the, you know, like back then when they put the, 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 the dimes and stuff on their uh, on their eyelids. So all these like tons of different little stories within the movie, it's almost like this one big anthology. And I feel like a lot of the Conjuring movies do that anyway. Like each mm -hmm. movie has like a couple of different stories going on in general. Um, and so I think that's what I would pair it with. Annabelle Comes Home because it, it's there are just a variety of like supernatural little stories and also just like pure, you know, murder happening. Uh, so I would say Annabelle Comes Home would be a great double feature for that. I like that. That I like the Annabelle movies. I like anything to do with Insidious. That's an offshoot of Insidious, right? Annabelle? Um, or, or is that the Conjuring? No, of Conjuring. 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 Yes. Okay. Like anything Insidious, Conjuring, spinoffs. Like I'm there. I love that stuff. I like that. Like the supernatural I know, yeah, I know, stories. I know the noon's come. Uh, the noon. <laughs> the nun is coming. The nun two is coming. Out. Nun I never two is coming. Nun, but I do know that Insidious, Insidious five, 5 is dropping is in July, I think. Yeah, and also like and Patrick Wilson's directing that. Yeah, he's directing um, it, which I'm like, okay. Yeah, which I'm excited. I know um, the boy is back as well. He's acting again. He was just in the whale. Um, the uh, the guy, the kid, uh, Dalton. I forget his name is Skyler or Sky. I forget his name, but um. Oh, he, the uh, guy, the the now. guy who was in like the first Insidious, like the kid. He's now an adult. The kid. That kid. Yes, yes, and he was oh, in. Right. Um, he was just in the whale, and then he was also in Iron Man three, and technically and End Game as well. Um, but he's gonna be in college, and it's basically and it's like it's kind of recurring back. Yeah. Uh, um, Ty Ty Simpkins. 
Ty, not Scott. Which, Ty's gonna, yes. which I, I watched The Whale and I'm like, where have I seen this actor before? And I looked mm -hmm. him up on IMDb when I got home and I went, oh, he was he, oh, he was the kid and he's in Jurassic World as well, right? Yeah. In Jurassic World? I think, yeah. yeah, I think he just like, took a break. from. It's me. like uh, the these again. actors, these actors who they go away for like three years and then they're like an adult now. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Oh my god! And just like the kid from the from Room. Oh my gosh! I was like, I thought he was just a little baby, and now he's just like a full grown. I think he's eighteen now. I'm like, what? I'm like, when did this happen? The craziest one was Nicholas Holt, the star of About yes. a Boy, who's yes. like this pudgy eleven, twelve year old kid. And then seven years later, I go with my friend to see a single man, <laughs> and he's like the hot, like twenty year old kind of like uh, hitting on uh, Colin Firth in that movie. And I'm like, this guy is so gorgeous. Who is this guy? And I go home and I'm like, oh my God, it's the kid from About a Boy. I didn't even put them together. Love I'm like, it. <laughs> wow, what seven years can do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nicholas he Holt. Really and now he's like one of my still, you know, one of my favorites when I when oh, I see Nicholas great. Holt in the movie. He's so talented and so gorgeous. He's so like, talented. Like <laughs> on the greats and, and some of the stuff he does. Um but yeah, so that's a good choice. I went with something a little bit. I was like, there's nothing left to say about like modern anthology stuff. So I just went with that segment with Glennis Johns and the abusive husband. And like one of my favorite unsung films from last year, which I think more people need to see, uh, is Resurrection with Rebecca Hall. Have you seen that? Re Resurrection? It's on Shutter. I I have not. I've heard wonderful things about it. I love Rebecca Hall. So I loved um, the Night House. She was so yeah. good in that. Um, so, I, was, I'm, I definitely want to check it out. I hear it's really, really good. Yeah. So the connection is the story is Rebecca Hall's character has kind of made a new life for himself with her daughter, and then this man comes back into her life, and it's a the man who used to abuse her in a previous relationship. And so that's kind of the connection between the two stories. Okay. Like if you like the segment with Glennis Johns, like that semi semi idea, but done in a much more modern film with a really strong central performance. I think a really okay. cool follow-up would be to watch Resurrection, mainly because I think it's worth watching and it's great. And not a lot of people know about it. Uh, I did a top 22 of uh, 2022 favorite films list on YouTube a few weeks back. And I feel like the one I talked about in that long video that probably not a lot of people know about is Resurrection. Didn't really get much of a theatrical release. It dropped quietly yeah, it on Shudder in October, I want to say. And boy, I just, I thought it was great. And I thought she was okay. Oscar worthy in that performance. She has some scenes in that movie that are like very commanding and really it felt very that. real, like her pain and her anguish when this man comes back into her life that she... Didn't think she'd ever see again. And uh, if you like Rebecca Hall, like check out Resurrection. It's really good. Like it's, I, it's, I definitely want to check it, it out. It, it, yeah, I, she's so talented. It's amazing to me that Rebecca Hall has never gotten an Oscar nomination because, I, I, I mean, Night House and Resurrection, she's so great. And then she also wrote and directed Passing, that amazing black and white Netflix movie uh, with oh. Tessa, Tessa Thompson. And Ruth Nega, that got a lot of awards buzz uh, in early 2022, and then fell short, did not get any Oscar nominations. Rebecca Hall is a talent, man. And I'm I'm, I'm yes. very excited one of these years for her to just be in the right project at the right time and finally get that Oscar nomination, because she's great. I completely agree. Uh, yeah, it would, it, it's definitely coming. Because, yeah, I, 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 yeah, she's so wonderful. Yeah. So our final segment's Beyond the Flick. I thought we'd talk about Glittis John. So uh what 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 are some other projects you've seen with glennis johns well um i had only known her for mary poppins because it's my favorite <laughs> it's my favorite disney movie of all time my family loves that movie my parents love it they were huge julie anderson and dick van dyke fans and so i lo grew up loving that movie and i always loved her i just said the mom was just so she wasn't she didn't have a huge part but i always loved her in it um should we do it just I, a quick can we do just like voice. a quick duet from that opening song just both of us right now oh which one uh, we sing uh, which, our uh, daughter's daughters will, will adore, adore us, us and they'll, they'll sing, sing in grateful, grateful chorus. chorus okay just well that done <laughs> yes uh, that opening song so is great and, in mary poppins it's so, and, uh uh 
the the um uh uh what the men part um we agree they're rather stupid <laughs> oh, oh we love men individually but we agree as a group yeah and it doesn't stupid. really like, does it yes, even rhyme it. i don't even think that part rhymes it's just like like we're we're waiting for a word that rhymes with the last one and then it doesn't but it still works because it's glenn and <laughs> like, okay exactly yes i so i i love 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 so yeah mary her, poppins so, is the ultimate that's her legacy really that film that's her legacy in, yeah. in movies is that movie Oh yeah, and I think and so I watched Miranda yesterday, which was like, everyone said like that was like her. Yes, tell really us about role. Miranda. I had not heard of this until you started yes. talking to me about it. it came out, I think it was nineteen forty forty eight. Nineteen forty eight. Oh, forty eight. Forty eight. Okay. Um, and so uh, we she she's a mermaid that um basically she is trying to steal everybody's man, and it's so great. Um, this guy, this really rich man, he goes on a holiday by himself to go fishing. And then she like he she like pulls his line and like saves him even though she kind of you know she planned it and she's like I want a man and she's like like the men down here are not very great and I love men and she's like you're really tall the last guy was too short and I threw him back I didn't want him and I was just like dang I was like she knows what she wants um and so he he's a doctor and he's just like okay he kind of like has a little thing for her he's <laughs> back to his home with his starts meeting all the men who work at the house and their friends and she's stealing everybody's husband everybody's boyfriend fiance and because she's very of course gorgeous she's a lovely voice and yeah. she's very flirty all it's funny though because all the women are like we know what you're doing but like we're gonna see how this plays out we want to see if our men are loyal basically um and it's 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 very funny like i found myself laughing a lot um at this movie and um the paul is the main he's the doctor he's the main male lead and um he his his wife is hysterical she's just like i she's like this girl like i don't know what's going on like there's something going on between them but you know we'll see how this goes um a lot of just like fun it's very campy uh it's like this i feel like game because Lionel strong is just like hilarious and just you know a man eater and it's great and <laughs> My favorite part with this, it's it's the open it's the opening scene. The first person you see in the movie is um, David Tomlinson from Mary Poppins. Um, he oh, opens the movie. He, he in... plays one of the um, uh, he uh, Mr. Banks. He he opens and yeah. he plays one of the um, he's dating the housekeeper, and he's just kind of like a guy who like drives them and runs their errands and does stuff. But of course, and then he falls in love with Glennis Johns. And I was just like, mm. oh my God, it's Mr. and Mrs. Banks. This is so cute. Um, and it was, it's it's so great. Uh, and he's very funny. His ears are really big. And she's like, she's like, he has the cutest little, like, these ears are so cute. They're so big. Uh, and you look like a little, uh, you look like a cocker little spaniel with the sad eyes. And she comments, on, like, he has to carry her around. And she's like, oh, like your arms are so strong and blah, blah, blah. And it's it's really wonderful. And there's a sequel called Mad About Men. Um, is she in the sequel? It comes out like, it's, yes, she's in the sequel. Okay. And it's her again as a mermaid. Um, at this 143, Miranda, that's in black and white. Mad About Men is in color. Um, so I'm interested to see, you know, be able to see a little bit more about what's going on. It's a little, it was a little hard to watch. It's like, you know, it's kind of hard to see black and white sometimes. Um, it's like the nighttime shots. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna watch it because I really, I really love Miranda. I'm excited <laughs> to watch Mad About Men or Mad, Mad for Men. I forget what it's called. I think it's Mad About Men, mm -hmm. uh, and it's great. So I definitely recommend it. I like that title, Mad About Men. It kind of just describes our lives, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. She's obsessed <laughs> with men. She loves men. She, she said the men in the sea are they have their eye, their nose are too flat and their eyes are too small. Ah. Um And yeah. That's awesome. So I, I looked so, yeah, at her he, filmography and I was so stunned by how many credits she had and I hadn't seen any of them. Like all, like her first credit goes back to 1938. Her last credit is, you said Molly Shannon earlier. Her last credit is Superstar from 99 starring yeah, Molly Shannon, <laughs> which I saw in high school. And, uh, but really I've only seen outside of Vault of Horror, I've only seen Mary Poppins and her other like, late stage career classic which i'll talk about in a moment but it did make me want to go back and see some of her work because it was kind of insane i'm going going to the 40s and the 50s and all these movies i'm like i don't know what any of these are so just knowing she's in 
so many of these films makes me very happy. There's a lot of films to discover. And I also love that as of this recording, she is still alive. She is 99 years old. She turns 100 Incredible. in October. She is still as of this recording with us. And that I think that fills my heart with joy. Like an it actor oh, yeah. who's in a film released in 1938 is still alive right now. That's cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But uh, so, yeah, so I, I like, I want to see the sundowners from 1960 starring Deborah uh, Carr, because that film is the only one that Linus Johns got an Oscar nomination for in the best supporting actress category. I tried to find at least a clip from it last night and I couldn't find it on YouTube, but I'll definitely get around to that. Uh, my third would my third favorite would not be a movie. It'd be I watched in 2018, 2019. I I got a box set and I watched all of the old Adam West Batman TV series. Oh, and she's in it. She's in like a bunch oh, of cool. episodes. Her name is Lady Penelope Pea Soup, <laughs> and uh, she's like one of the bad guys. And it's a very colorful performance, and she's really great in that. I remember watching it. I'm like, oh, it's a lady from Mary Poppins. And then my my of course my favorite is Mary Mary Poppins. I don't think I don't know how anyone oh, yeah, can pick something else. And she's not in a lot of the movie, but boy does she boy is she memorable. Like she really everybody in that movie is so colorful and 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 they stick out. But yeah, there's something about Glynis Johns, her singing voice, uh, her presence in Mary Poppins. It's just the greatest. Cheery disposition. Yeah. I also watched. Uh, I went on YouTube and just typed in her name to see what came up and. Uh, she was she did a lot of stage work outside of film and TV. She and did, she, yeah. She won a Tony in 1973, 50 years ago, uh, for um a a, a late night late nights. Oh, I just forgot the title. The one by uh, Stephen Sondheim that has one of my favorite of his songs, uh Send in the Clowns. Uh, stage music, Stephen Sondheim. But uh, there's a clip on YouTube, A Little Night Music. That's the name of the show, A Little Night okay. Music. She won a Tony Award for that. The wow. clip is on YouTube of her accepting her Tony, which is kind of cool. I'm like, wow, I didn't know we had any Tony Awards like uh, available from the 70s, but there it was. And there was also a clip of her performing the song Send in the Clowns to a large audience, a big auditorium of people. And she she breaks down crying at the end of the song. And I've heard oh. that song by Glenn Close. Barbara Streisand, Frank Sinatra. I've heard that song sung by 10 different famous people. I had never heard her version and it was so moving. Uh, Angela Lansbury has a great version on YouTube. Oh, wow. I, I listen to, uh, but John's is one of my favorites. It was really great. Um, but my, my other favorite project she's in is uh, the one that stars my all time favorite, Sandra Bullock. It's a movie I've seen 30, 40 times. And that's while you were sleeping Linus Johns <laughs> plays the grandmother and while you were Aww. sleeping and it's hilarious has a great supporting role in that movie have you seen while you were sleeping I have not no. oh you gotta watch why oh it's a Christmas classic Andrew okay I'm, do, I'm, I'm do you, do you like uh Sa do you like Sandra Bullock oh yeah I if mean, you like Sandra it. Bullock it's like it's so she broke onto the scene with speed in 1994 that was like her big yes. breakthrough oh, so good and then the next film she made was while you were sleeping and she's it's oh, like okay. it's Sandra Bullock at her most adorable, just just like and, and, and not in any way forced. It's just this really lovely performance she gives while you're sleeping. It's a great story. And uh, there's a family that comes comes involved in, in her world. And Glynis Johns plays the grandmother and she's got some great comedic moments. And she's also very warm okay. and. And you can still see the lady from Mary Poppins <laughs> in her oh, in that movie. She's playing, you know, a very loving character in that. So check out While You Were Sleeping, one of my favorites. Okay, will do. All right, that takes us to the end here. Andrew, thanks for being back on Film at 50. Thank I'll try to you. find a, a better film next time to talk about. We'll find something this summer. It was sure. bad. It was fun. What was the film that we didn't? What was the one that we didn't like at all? I can't think of. Silent one. Night, Bloody Night was the was yeah, the, was the Night, really was the, tough that was watch. That was like that was the tough one where we just remember at one point uh, I had to read aloud the synopsis because I couldn't quite remember what it was about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was so oh, dull yeah. I, because there was so much talking, and there was a lot of thing. plot. There was so much there was plot, lot of and plot. none of it mattered. It was so ridiculous. It, yeah, and there was like newspaper clippings of all these, like, oh, it was a, it was a house <laughs> asylum. And then they all, I was like, what? Like, when did this happen? Like, what's going on? Yeah, that was a 
that was the hardest movie to watch. This compared compared to yeah, Silent Night, Bloody Night. This was Oscar worthy. Yeah, but we'll find we'll find a good one this summer to do uh, horror or oh, not yeah. horror. We've done a couple non horror pieces that have been fun. We did uh, Lady Sings the Blues, and uh, yeah, that was a good one. And some 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 really great the the John Schlesinger film. I think that's the first one we did together. The the Sunday Bloody, Bloody Sunday. Sun- yeah yeah that was a good that, one too. that was your introduction to film of 50 yes it, it was wasn't it yeah it was uh and that, that was a good it was interesting to see like the uh the lgbtq bi- film yes the, and he's bisexual and i was just like i didn't even know they even talk about bisexual people <laughs> during that time so i was like it was really cool yeah so, uh, yeah, we've done a lot of great episodes. We've covered uh, 25th anniversaries of Scream and Scream 2. If you go back into the archives, check mm-hmm. those out. Those are If you're a fan of Scream and Wes Craven, go back to our, our two conversations we had about Scream 1 and Scream 2. Like, they're really thorough and really great. So check those out. Anything you'd like to promote oh, yeah. or tell our listeners where they can find you online? No, not really. Just um, social media, AR Campbell 94 um, and Letterboxd, if you want to see what I'm watching. Um, I, I, I do go to the movies quite often. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I love going there and I, it's, <laughs> it's some of my ratings have not been too great. Some, I've seen some pretty bad movies lately, but all really <laughs> great ones. So, um, uh, definitely. Yeah. Check it out there. Um, yeah. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. it I, it's always fun. I, I, I was talking to someone yesterday, actually, I went to a jazz concert, um, a performance for a, my friend's sister's boyfriend uh and i was like oh like it's guy i'm in the middle of watching this movie uh called miranda she's like oh my god i love that movie she's like the mermaid i was like yeah she's like thank you and she started talking about uh plan nine something, something from outer space from outer space yes and she's like oh if you like if you like that watch it it's, it's super camping <laughs> makes no sense but it's very, very fun and i was like okay i'm gonna watch it um so uh and oh plan nine podcasting. is uh because she likes to watch old movies oh okay it's bonkers and i'm excited to see it so I'm like, I'll watch it. Yeah, I'm excited. So Plan 9, that's a weird comparison, though, because Plan 9 from Outer Space from the 1950s is considered by many to be the worst movie of all time. Oh, she said yes. It's like, oh, so because we're discussing this weird... I thought like, Miranda you liked. <laughs> oh, no, I love I loved okay. Miranda. And so but she was like, she's like, she's like the movie that I love, it's like an old oh, okay. movie that uh, is, yeah, Plan 9 from Outer Space. She's just like, she's like... It makes no sense, but it's so funny to watch. Oh, uh, it's and also like okay, so watch it with a crowd. It's more fun if you have a couple friends over with Plan Nine. It's okay. just so stupid and like one 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 shot. It's nighttime and then the next shot is daytime, and you're like, what? And it's just a lot of like those kind <laughs> okay. of things. And the story makes no love sense. It. It's just all over the place. I love, and, it. love that. But it's made. It's a movie made with love, and that's why people really like it. Plan Nine from Outer okay. Space. So yeah, thanks for again for being here, Andrew. Thanks to wow. all of you for listening. You can find us online at film at 50.com. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram. Check out my YouTube channel, Brian Rowe video for all things Oscars. And until next time, remember 50 never looked this good.